Well, good morning from Pelicamp. It is a beautiful morning here in the Big Bend area of Florida. We have new neighbors. I like what they've done with the place. Um, we haven't met in person yet. We don't seem to be coming here uh, at the same time. I mean, we really haven't come to Pelicamp uh, in a while, actually. But um, yeah, look at that. It's, it's beautiful. Fall has arrived. Fall has arrived uh, to this part of Florida. In fact, we were worried, particularly about our well, because we had four nights of hard freeze here in this area. It went down to the 20s uh, Fahrenheit. But luckily, our friends, the Hicks, average campers, uh, you know, I called them, hey, can you check Pali Camp, you know, like prepare it for the cold weather. And, uh, and he did. Uh, so um, so I'm, I'm very grateful for that. I mean, it's any one, still there, very nice. Everything is, uh, seems to be well with it. And as, as, as I mentioned, this is pretty much all we're going to do uh, here at Feli Camp. Our visit here is mostly utilitarian, just to make sure everything's fine, you know. And um, then tomorrow, well, you're gonna have to watch the video for that. <laughs> I'm writing. Riding in my RV, my RV Wherever I want to be Cause I'm free in my RV yeah. This is the first time here in 2023 and we're starting and uh, hopefully in, in two weeks we're gonna be in Arizona <laughs> So uh, we're not, I'm not gonna quite hightail it as I've done before but uh, yeah, we're driving to the west very soon here. We're just about one and a half miles as the crow flies from the Gulf of Mexico. And as I mentioned, this is Pelicamp, as I have named it. And if you're new to my videos, this is what I'd like to call our Northern Florida retreat. Our own private campground. And originally I wanted for it to look as much as possible like a Florida state park leaving as much vegetation as possible intact. But I didn't really take into account how much area the septic was going to take and how close the neighbors were going to be. It turns out, out here, an acre is not that big. Not that I'm complaining. The dream is to have two or three of these strategically located around the United States. Remote plots of relatively inexpensive land in which to park the RV. A man can dream, right? It is just beautiful this time of the year. We have two full hookup sites here, one for Minitini, my original trailer, and one for the one I currently have, which is a loaner from Monabego, as part of my deal as a brand ambassador for Towables. There's the statue of a pelican. I bought off a stand on the side of the road on the way to Tallahassee. The oversized area where the septic is, I call it the Batei, after the Taino word for plaza. Taino were the indigenous people of the Northern Caribbean, where I'm originally from. Well, we're leaving Pelly Camp. We've got bad weather coming, so... And we're gonna do something different today. Well, we stopped by JB Tires there in Perry to replace two of the rear tires uh, in Minitini 3. Apparently, it seems to be a problem that is more common than, than we realize, but a lot of trailers, they tend to wear out the, the, some tires uh, unevenly, and, uh, and I put a lot of miles on this rig, so those two rear tires uh, needed replacing. Lots of logging in this area. It is called the forest capital of Florida for a reason. This town is called Mayo 
and there are several springs in this area, and the idea is to visit one of them. Not quite here in Mayo, but nearby. The weather, however, doesn't seem to want to cooperate. Now crossing the historic Suwani River, and we're almost there. Hmm, this driveway goes farther than I thought. And here we are. When I said we were gonna do something a little different, well, today we're staying at an Airbnb. And, um, and the, the owner contacted, contacted me and told me, you know, Robert, if you wanna stop by, we're really close here, by the way, just one mile away from Ichatokni Itch Springs, I believe it is called. And uh, we're gonna do that tomorrow. It was a little bit of a challenge backing into this spot, but uh, I mean, if you only have a, a passenger vehicle, it should be no problem, right? Let's, let's do the house tour real quick here. This is, uh, this is what it looks like. That's a, a private residence back there. But this is a huge, huge property. I mean, it's, uh, I'm sure it's many acres. I don't know how many. This is called the cottage right here. And, uh, you know, just gonna do a quick tour of uh, what it looks like. So join me. As, uh, as we and we're gonna stay here just uh, the two nights uh, tomorrow we'll explore the, 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 the springs this is very nice living room here with a fireplace uh, futon sofa and here's the kitchen very nice to have a coffee machine here because you know in the morning that's what I like to do and uh, here we have a one bedroom this is not the master bedroom this is just a a regular bedroom, closet. It's very nice, actually. Here we have, <clears throat> here we have the bathroom. Let me see if I can figure out the light. Here we go. Here's the bathroom, and uh, and the bathtub. Very nice. Very nice. Everything that you would need, right? Illy will be happy to see this big mirror here. Here we have a library of sorts. I don't know if we have any more light around here. Yeah, I was looking for the light. It's a little dark. I mean, you, you're supposed to like open up all the, sh all the shades and you have a view to the outside. But this will be the master bedroom here. Very nice. Uh, with another futon and we have passed through pass through to the kitchen. So it would be a good idea, you know, if you want to have like breakfast in bed, you make the breakfast there, you, you know, set it there. And uh, what do we have here? Here's a, oh, here, here's the front yard. As you can see, we have a grill out there. And here's the backyard, which I really like the backyard. Like probably today for sundowners, this is what we're gonna do. Here we go. Here we have two, two chairs. And there's like a spring down there. We have more chairs down there. Here we have a, a heater, or a, you know, fireplace. Nice little table. It's beautiful, it's beautiful out here. Well, I forgot to tell you, but we did not have breakfast, so. Um, Let's see if this is operational and then we can grill some steaks that I have, you know, thawing in the fridge. And now in typical Florida fashion, it started to rain, so that, that barbecue is gonna have to wait. It stopped raining, so let's grill two steaks. Another downpour, and it stopped again. Welcome to Florida. Mm. 
I think I may have overcooked him. Oh well. Well, cheers. We came back to the camper to get some work done, and as I mentioned, today the weather just does not want to cooperate. Well, good morning. It is a cool, cool, foggy morning here in northern Florida. And uh, we actually ended up sleeping in the RV. Uh, we had better internet in there. Uh, but, um, and unfortunately, it rained all day yesterday, so we weren't able to enjoy all the uh, outdoor facilities. You know, we just went inside and watched TV, watched some YouTube. <laughs> um, yeah, which is cool because I was able to watch YouTube not as a, as my own account but as everybody else and I, you know I didn't log in into a you know TV that is not mine so I was able to see all the commercials you know that everybody complains about <laughs> it is uh, it, it is lovely especially if you want to disconnect you know I mean the road is right there you can hear some road noise but you feel like you are in the middle of of this Florida forest and uh, Unfortunately, uh, we have to continue. We have to continue. Uh, at some point, we have to make it to Arizona on this trip. We're gonna try to check out uh, the, 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 the springs and then we start driving to the north because I don't wanna take I-10 on this trip. We're gonna take, go to Atlanta and then take I-20. <laughs> We've never taken I-20 before. All right, let's hit the road. Before we go, let's pause for a moment to take in the peaceful beauty of this place in the dense morning fog. It is a huge property, 17 acres according to the Airbnb listing, and you really feel like you are out here, in the middle of the forest. I even saw a deer yesterday, but couldn't catch it on camera. There will be a link to the Airbnb listing in the video description in case you want to stay at this lovely property. Let's go to Itchatuckney Springs. Well, this is the most honorable uh, honor system I've seen yet. You know, they, they have nowhere for them to verify that your, your license plate number is the one that, that you paid for. So uh, let's look for an oversized parking and uh, and see what's there to do here in, in Itchitakni Springs State Park. Well, as you can see on a foggy, chilly, by Florida standards, Thursday morning, there's no one here. Okay, here's the park map. And uh, well, we are here by the head spring. We're gonna go see the head spring first. And then there's a short trail to the blue, to the blue hole. So that's what we're gonna do second. And that's pretty much all we're gonna do. And then we're heading to Georgia, which is on my mind. They have a food truck here, apparently. Riverside Grill, apparently. I don't know if it is only on weekends, but apparently they have food here. <laughs> It's, the park is deserted on a, today is what, Thursday? Thursday, I have to record the, port, the podcast today. On a Thursday at 8.30 a.m. the park is deserted. We are the only ones in the parking lot. I think this is gonna be the, the, the main spring, the head spring. And here they have this large picnic area. So if you buy food from the food truck, you can, you know, eat it here. Very nice. Yeah, it's gotta be down here. Of course, any fresh body of water in Florida could have gators, so they have to have the, the disclaimer. 
This is it, the head spring. Let me tell you, I would not mind snorkeling down there. The water is so clear. This would be the headwaters of the Itchatuckney River, and I really wish we had a clearer, warmer day here, but I'm not complaining. Well, I am. Well, Itchatuckney Springs here definitely lives up to the hype. I, I can't wait to return one day with better weather, you know, to be able to actually swim in the waterhole. Um, yeah, it's the water is fully transparent and uh, even the deeper parts. Now we're gonna go to the blue hole and then up to Georgia we go. I can only imagine this place on a summer weekend. Here we go, blue hole trail. Very easy trail, it seems. The beginning is this boardwalk. to tell you I did forget my hiking shoes but I mean the trail is so easy so flat it's <laughs> it's it's almost ADA compliant let's put it that way oh we can see the river down there it is just beautiful it looks like fall in January. There was a rare early hard freeze this year and that's probably why all the trees are confused. You see, that's what I wanna do. And we have arrived. I guess this is one of those that looks better from underwater and I, I, you saw that picture. I mean, you can still see the water is perfectly crystalline, transparent, you can see the bottom, but, um, but not as good as, 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 the, as, the, as the head spring. At the very least, it was a, a nice hike, very pleasant. Uh, now we're gonna head back. Yep, let's hit the road. Georgia awaits. And with that, we're saying goodbye to Florida and hello to Georgia. Boom. Welcome to Georgia. Oh, thank you. Just a quick late breakfast here at the Georgia Welcome Center. Just because we can, right? <laughs> Bacon and eggs is always a good combination. And I already ate the bacon, so now we're gonna eat the egg. <laughs> On the side of the road. Georgia has got to be one of the states with the most billboards. Horse Creek, that's a harvest host. We stayed there once. And the Magnolia Plantation. That's gotta be the most advertised gas station in history. And that's really all there is to it. I mean, the store has some nice Georgia products, but 
It is basically a gas station with a large store. Oh, it looks like the plantation house went out of business. I guess advertising works. Oh no, that's a bad traffic jam. I feel sorry for those folks. And we've made it to our destination, Stone Mountain Park. We are going to use this as our base to explore Atlanta, which I think will be the second installment of our Great American Cities series. We haven't been here in a few years. I mean, we've been in the area, but not in the city itself. As I recall, this was a very nice park and campground. Which, by the way, there's a $20 entrance fee, even if you have a campground reservation. The sun is almost setting, and this was an almost an all-day drive here. <laughs> By the way, that back there, that's Stone Mountain. Right now, we just gotta finish setting up and uh, get something to eat. And tomorrow, tomorrow we start exploring Atlanta and the area. By the way, the, the temperature is dropping quickly. <laughs> it's getting cold. There are several restaurants inside the park, and they all close early. But let's try one of them. This one is called The Commons, but there doesn't seem to be anybody here. Well, what can I say? The place looks nice, but it was lacking a little in ambience. I mean, there was nobody there. <laughs> so let's try someplace else. Mm, that's a nice view of Stone Mountain. There's this German restaurant in the Stone Mountain village that is pretty good. And they also have Stone Mountain Brewing Company there. A good IPA, because that's how we do it. And at first, she brought us the wrong soup, but she promptly replaced it with the sausage and potatoes, which was really good. And the Hungarian goulash wasn't exactly what we were expecting, but it wasn't bad. Not bad at all, actually. And that's it. We're gonna call it a night. Tomorrow, we'll begin exploring the ATL, the capital and largest city of the Peach State. Morning. It is a beautiful morning here at uh, Stone Mountain Park. A, a little cold. It's like in the low 40s, but that won't deter us from going to Atlanta. We're going to Atlanta today. So let's hit the road. So yeah, we're staying at Stone Mountain Park Campground, which is very nice actually. We've been here before and God willing, we'll be back here again. It is only about 40 minutes away from the heart of Atlanta. And that's the plan for today. I mean, we drive through this great American city at least twice a year, sometimes more. And we've been here a handful of times. But we haven't really visited places like the Capitol Building, or the Martin Luther King National Historical Park, or what we like to do in certain cities. Just walk around and get lost. Spoiler alert! While well, we're going to visit, or at least pass by some of the iconic spots, this is by no means an in-depth, all-encompassing visit. That being said, join us as we explore Atlanta. We might even discover new things along the way. Here on the right, Centennial Olympic Park, Georgia's legacy of the 1996 Summer Olympic Games. And I think our biggest challenge here is going to be finding reasonably priced parking. And the aquarium garage could work, but it's 6'8 clearance, and Starship here is 6'7. I'm still afraid I might scrape the rooftop GoPro or something else. In my mind, one inch is too close for comfort. 
Not a whole lot of traffic in this area on a Friday, or pedestrians for that matter, which makes it feel somewhat uninviting. Atlanta, besides being Georgia's largest city, is also its capital, so how about we visit the state capitol building first? First impression? There's a lot of people living on the street, which is unfortunate. I was really hoping to find parallel parking on the street, but eventually we decided to go inside a parking garage. We're just a couple of blocks away. The government walk. You are here. State capital. After going through the X-ray machine and the metal detector, here we are. We are now on the second floor, and while it is not as ornate as other capital buildings we've seen, it is still beautiful in a classic sense and grand with this three-story atrium and lots of paintings and other works of art. Here we have the Secretary of State's office. And on the other side, the office of the governor. Here's a portrait of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who was born here in Atlanta in 1929. Here's a bust of James Edward Oglethorpe, founder of the colony of Georgia. This chamber would be the House of Representatives. They were doing some kind of orientation at the Senate chamber, so I decided not to film in there. But it's very similar to the House of Representatives, just smaller, as it should be. And here we are at the fourth floor, which is the museum. Ooh. The museum has lots of information about the natural and cultural history of Georgia. But the presentation feels, perhaps, a little dated. I mean, it's been in existence since 1889. There's some kind of high production going on down there. Here's another view of the House of Representatives from up above. So that's how it is inside. And this is the Senate's chamber. Well, it is kind of hard to see. Here's a statue of a Mississippian chief. That was the Georgia State Capitol, so let's continue. The statue of Miss Freedom stands atop the dome, gilded with gold leaf from Dahlonega. And here we have the statue of the 39th President of the United States, from Plains, Georgia, 
President Jimmy Carter. We visited his boyhood home last year. And this would be Richard Russell, at one point Georgia's youngest governor and lifelong politician. Here's one more look at the gilded cupola and Miss Freedom. All right, onward we go. Here's the view from one of the parking lot's upper levels. Parking ended up being $10, which is kind of steep for the time we spent here, but not unheard of in a major city downtown. Okay, let's go somewhere else. Someone recommended a local chain serving Cuban sandwiches called Cubanos ATL, and it is a little bit of a drive, but we want to take a break from downtown anyway. It is kind of eerily deserted. It is certainly not a city where you feel compelled to walk around, explore, get lost in the concrete jungle in its urban maze. Now we're going to an area called the Upper West Side, comprised of many historic neighborhoods, but today we're visiting the new thing. It is called The Works, and it is this mixed-use development. We're actually more interested in the food hall, called the Chattahoochee Food Works. Hmm, Bobo intriguing objects. I'm really intrigued. There it is, and there's a Cubanos ATL inside. As you can see, it is not very busy, well, except for the Cubanos ATL stand. And she's by herself, she has many to-go orders and barely acknowledged us, and after what felt like an eternity, we decided to go eat someplace else. Well, we ended up eating someplace else, not at the Cubanos ATL. Uh, I mean, she was swamped and understaffed, and, uh, and we were really hungry. So we went for the for the plate, and it was really good, actually, what we had. Yeah, we had a Philly cheesesteak, which was good. Now let's go to this park, which is also new, and according to what we read, you get a nice view of downtown. Here we are, West Side Park. We are here. We're gonna take. Uh, we're gonna look for this yellow loop. This, is, by the way, West Side Park, but we have no idea what we're doing. There's supposed to be a nice view of downtown with the reservoir. And that's what we're looking for. That's it. That's the view. I'm not impressed. Like in many other cities, there's a lot of new high-end development here in Atlanta. And to be honest, we don't really feel like finding parking and walking around anymore. That Philly cheesesteak kind of made me sleepy, actually. But let's do a drive-by tour, shall we? There are actually many things we can see without getting out of the car. 
For example, Margaret Mitchell's home. She's famous for writing the novel Gone with the Wind, later adapted for the big screen in 1939, considered to this day one of the greatest films of all time. This, by the way, Peachtree Street, perhaps the main north to south street here in Atlanta. And here's the Fox Theater from the 1920s, very historic. Actually, I just had a great idea. Let's get out of downtown. Well, here we are at the Martin Luther King National Historical Park. As we enter, we are greeted by a statue of Mahatma Gandhi, who inspired King in the pursuit of nonviolent resistance. Let's step inside. There's a plethora of information inside about the civil rights movement, and the life and death of King. juxtaposition of all the audio sources does feel a little cacophonous, but perhaps that's the intent. Let's walk across to the tomb site. Nonviolence and non-existence. And this is it. The final resting place of Martin Luther and Coretta Scott King. We could literally spend hours here, going through all the exhibits in detail and taking all the tours, but that's all we're going to do today. Since there are no more tours of the house available today, we're just going to drive by the birth home of Martin Luther King. And there it is on the right. They are in the process of restoring many other houses in the neighborhood.
Now we are approaching Inman Park. This was Atlanta's first planned suburb, dating back to the late 1880s. That's all we're gonna do today. Tomorrow, we are actually moving closer into town and we might be able to explore a little more. Tomorrow will be another day. Good morning. It's beautiful out here. Very cold, but beautiful. We're gonna go on a little hike. How about that? Let's hike to the top of Stone Mountain. Yeah, the tram is not working, so we're gonna hike. Ooh. There it is, Stone Mountain. And the plan is to hike all the way to the top. Well, here we are. Seems to be a pretty busy trail, uh, judging uh, by the parking lot. So let's see where the trailhead is. Okay, so we are here and we're gonna take the walk up trail all the way to the top of Stone Mountain here. Let's do it. I've been wanting to do this hike uh, for a while now. I believe that's the Confederate Hall back there, but the hike is up. I mean, we're, we're gonna have the sun in our face. <clears throat> and it's cold, I'm losing my voice. Here we go, walk up trail. Mm. Let me tell you, it is a little bit wet because of the morning condensation, so I must be careful not to, to slip and fall, you know? It's a beautiful morning otherwise, beautiful. Perfect weather. I mean, it's cold, but other than that, it's probably high 30s. Temporary petroglyphs. Yeah, this part seems to be a little uneven. But it's not bad, it's a relentless, you know, uphill climb. But we've done a lot more strenuous than this so far. Steady climb, let me tell you, steady climb, but either I'm in better shape now or it is actually not all that strenuous, to be honest about it. 
Oh, it's becoming a little more steep now in this part. You can already see Atlanta back there. It is not a bathroom, it's just like a like a rest area. Yeah, I believe this coming up would be the steepest part. Still, compared to like Mount Manadnak, this is nothing. <laughs> mentioned never forget to look back what have you let me let's see if from from up there well, we don't have all this uh, cables or wires okay now for the steepest part they even have this handrail so you can help yourself but it's still not that bad Oh yeah, that's a good incline, good exercise. Oh yeah, that section back there really kicked my butt. But the views are definitely going to be worth it. I was saying it is such a perfectly clear day today you know that you can see for miles and miles this is gonna be great now is it that way or this way I don't know I guess we follow the yellow blazes or the white blazes I don't know we'll follow the white blazes yeah, here comes another pretty steep section of the hike we're almost there we're almost there and I believe we have conquered the top of Stone Mountain that would be the tram station, which is temporarily closed for scheduled maintenance as of our visit here on January 7th. Yeah, it's always a great satisfaction when you complete a hike like this one. It was uh, pretty strenuous towards the end, although it wasn't very long in general. It was uh, a mile. In fact, I've done right now 1.01 miles in 30 minutes. And I'm gonna linger here at the top of, uh, for a little bit, take a couple of pictures and and we'll go back down because we have to check out from the campground today. We're gonna stay at Harvest Host. We might explore Atlanta a little more and then spend one night with the family. And then for real, driving to the west. As I told you earlier, the, the tram is not working. There'll be a, a good way to come up here, you know, if, uh, if you don't feel like doing the, the strenuous climb or you're able to, so. Uh, Beautiful views all around. Let's see what the views are from this particular vantage point. I wonder how he made it up here. I mean, the highest point has to be somewhere around here. Here we go, that's it. That's the geodetic marker, U.S. coast. You know, I should have paid more attention to the trailhead sign because I have no idea what the difference is between the solid white and the, and the broken yellow. I think I came up through the broken yellow though, so that's where we're gonna go down. Here's another geodetic marker, so this might be the very true top, I don't know. Yeah, I don't really know how that works. I imagine that would be like the beginning of the Appalachian, right? The Appalachian Mountains or Appalachian, as they say. Those are the King and Queen Towers. They resemble chess pieces, hence the name. 
and I believe we are now right on top of the Confederate memorial carving. And that would be the inn down there. The historic Carillon. Those must be the yurts, part of the campground. Of course, the great views of downtown Atlanta, about 50 miles to the west. Well, like they say, what goes up must come back down, so, or something like that. Yeah, We're going back down. <laughs> It is a very, very busy trail here on a, on a Saturday morning. Uh, I mean, I was expecting it to be kind of busy, but not this busy. We can still see, I mean, the, the, the views of, of downtown Atlanta ever present on the way down. I think the views on the way down are, you know, it's, when you're going up, you don't really look back as much, but on the way down here, it's, uh, it's quite a sight. And I still don't know where the solid white white goes to. Uh, maybe that's how the, the, the pickup truck <laughs> made it all the way up here. I mean, it's not trivial. It's uh... I'm glad. I'm glad we did this. All right, let's go down. Time's running out. It is a lot steeper than it looks on camera, let me tell you. And my 360 uh, uh, memory card filled up, so we don't have a 360 for this section. But I'm taking it very slow because it is, it is like 45 degrees, or at least it feels like 45 degrees. Here we are, we've made it to that kind of halfway point, uh, resting area, picnic, shelter, whatever you want to call it. And I guess, just like in that wall in Seattle, people here have that disgusting practice of sticking gum to things why i'll never understand yep i can see i can see the white building so we're almost there almost there confederate hall that's what it's called let me take a look here real quick at the trail map see if we can figure out what that other uh, solid wild white trail was okay, this is the one we took and the, I guess the white trail, uh, this is the sky ride. Oh, here we go. I don't understand. Well, I'm glad I got here early. The parking lot seems to be completely full now. And I forgot where I parked. Over there. A little close, perhaps. I'm glad I've lost some weight. We well, stopped here real quick because we're gonna see the carving on Stone Mountain. 
And, uh, and then, for real, we gotta get going. Yeah, this is where you would take the sky ride if it was working, and we did, we took it uh, some years back. It's cool because you got to see the, the carving on the rock from the sky ride. This is um, not fully open at this time. View the carving, let's do it. Well, there it is. It is the largest high-relief sculpture in the world. It depicts three Confederate figures of the Civil War, President uh, Jefferson Davis, and Generals Robert E. Lee and Thomas J. Stonewall Jackson. The main sculptor was one Gutson Borglum, better known for another, arguably more famous sculpture depicting four presidents. And we were just up there. It kind of sucks when things are undergoing renovations or are closed. I'm sure it's for the better in the long run, but for the purposes of our visits, you know, it is what it is, as they say. It is moving day, and today we're going to a harvest host closer to town, so it will be less expensive just to take an Uber. I mean, almost equally expensive as parking. Well, it turns out the Harvest Host is a brewery in the same Upper West Side neighborhood we were yesterday. I think we're supposed to park by this orange cones right here. We took an Uber, we are at uh, Centennial Olympic Park and uh, it was a cool Uber ride because it was our first Tesla ride and uh, the driver, she, she was like it's, it's super enthusiastic, you know, telling us about all the features and whatnot, so that was very cool. That was one of the coolest uh, Uber rides we've ever had, if not the coolest. I'll give her a good rating for sure. And uh, well, now we're going to walk around and, and see what's up. It's a, it's a beautiful day in Atlanta. By the way, that behind me is the Georgia Aquarium. It's supposed to be the largest aquarium in the United States, I believe. But some other time, you know, as you know, we're not really aquarium or zoo people. I mean, we visit them from time to time, but uh, one of these days. Right now, I want to see the Olympic rings and then just uh, look around here. Maybe we'll go to the sundial later for some sundowners. Here we have a sculpture of Pierre de Coubertin, founder of the International Olympic Committee, known as the father of modern Olympic Games. Yeah, those are the Olympic rings in the form of a fountain. Um, I don't want to get wet, so... Oh yeah, in every city you're gonna have a landmark where people will take, you know, make a line to take a picture with it. Here in Atlanta is the Olympic rings. I'm sure there are other ones, but anyway. Let's see if we can find the, the world of Coca-Cola. Here's William Porter, 
of the Atlanta Committee for the 1996 Olympic Games. Another major attraction here is the world of Coca-Cola, since it was here that the sugary drink was created by one John Pemberton in 1886, after Fulton County passed prohibition legislation. As you probably know, we're not really into sugary drinks, but world of Coca-Cola is a thing here, right? This is where Atlanta, Pemberton, that's the name of the guy who invented Coca-Cola, he was from here. So, uh, it's the birthplace of Coke. And uh, all the other sugary drinks you may think of. And uh, I'll have one once or twice a year when I go to a fast food joint, but that's about it. All right, let's walk around downtown a little bit, at least to Peachtree Street. Say that three times in a row. We were hoping to get something to eat around here, but today, on a Saturday, it doesn't seem to be that kind of downtown. And my instincts tell me it may not be very safe here after dark. That makes me feel better. I mean, look at it, there's a Hard Rock and a Hooters, so some places are open, but downtown is certainly not as I remembered it from just a few years ago. I guess perception is a funny thing. I am not gonna go into too many details, but suffice to say, it got to a point where it didn't feel safe, so I put away the camera and we took an Uber back to the works. We ended up coming to Taste Wine Bar and Bistro Market, actually. It is a great concept. They give you a card and you pour yourself whatever you want. The owner super friendly and at the time of our visit, they had only been open for about a week. I wish him success. The paninis are really good, too. Spanish panini. I'm gonna be honest, I was a little down in Atlanta this time around. But just coming to this place redeemed the whole city of Atlanta, which comes to show sometimes you have to come to the, the suburbs, the neighborhoods where you know people actually live and, and play. And you find places, it was expensive, don't get me wrong, it was pricey, but the friendliest people, the absolutely amazing wines, great, one of the best paninis I've had. And, uh, and actually, bottle prices, not bad at all. So. And with that, we conclude our great American cities, Atlanta. We'll be back. We came back to our harvest host, Second Self Brewing, to, as it is customary, patronize the business. They have this retro vibe going. Pretty cool. So they have a beer with my name on it. In the morning, we drove to Ackworth to spend some time with family, but what happens in Ackworth stays in Ackworth. Now we have a long two-day drive ahead of us all the way to Texas, to the Piney Woods area, and then the Dallas-Fort Worth megalopolis. Well, we woke up at the crack of dawn, and now we are truly driving to the west. 
into the sunset actually into the moonset away from the sunrise right now because it is 804 as and as soon as we cross into Alabama it's gonna be 704 we're about to cross into into sweet home Alabama today we're crossing two states Alabama and Mississippi Entering Central Time Zone. You are welcome to Alabama. Welcome to Alabama. Oh, thank you. Welcome to Sweet Home Alabama. Drive into the west, into the sunset. Drive into the west. Drive into the west, into the sunset. And yes, as the sign proves, we're back in sweet home Alabama. Unfortunately, um, we're just driving through this time around, but uh, we'll be back, we'll be back Alabama. And here's the plan, we're just gonna drive through Alabama and then drive through also the great state of Mississippi. And we're gonna stay at a casino on the Mississippi River, that's the plan plans could change but uh, it's frigid by the way frigid morning here uh, another sign Alabama welcomes you there you go they're very welcoming here in Alabama we've been here before we've been here we'll be here again Ooh, it's cold the Sun is rising back there behind the fog and uh, yeah this is gonna be mostly a travel video today I don't think we're gonna do anything or stay anywhere until we get to Tyler, Texas. It's going to be garbanzos at the rest area and of course from last night's party we had some leftovers I mean we have food for like two days so let's dig in mm. welcome to Mississippi oh thank you and there's our sign the birthplace of America's music We're going to spend the night at the Ameristar Casino. They have an RV park and they think I made the wrong turn. I didn't see the sign saying no RVs allowed at this entrance. The RV park is actually a little farther down the road. This is where we spent the night, just a few hundred feet east of the mighty Mississippi. It is cloudy all of a sudden. Anyway, good morning, and uh, here we are at the at the Ameristar Casino here, a 
Vicksburg, uh, uh, are we still in Mississippi? Yeah, Mississippi, the Mississippi River. Well, you just saw it, Louisiana on the other side. And, uh, and today we're gonna go all the way uh, to Tiki West, which is uh, where our friends Paul and Tina, you may remember them uh, from a couple years ago, we did that uh, rally in San Antonio. They were the ones who organized it. And uh, yeah, this was just a quick layover. And mainly I wanted to use the laundry facility. The laundry facility is out of order. But seems pretty nice in season. They have a swimming pool and, and I think they have a sh usually a shuttle to the casino over there. We didn't go to the casino. We didn't really do anything. We just needed a night with full hookups, you know, even though Paul has full hookups at his place, you know. He has like a, like a belly camp on steroids. He calls it Tiki West. Well, I'm gonna start unplugging things and hit the, hit the road. We're crossing the Mississippi, not exactly the halfway point, more like a third, but it is that psychological point of no return between the densely populated East and the sparsely populated West. At least that's how I see it. They have espresso, yep. Someone recommended this place right here by the welcome center called Yardbird. Had to try it. Hmm, crawfish queso. And we also ordered a po'boy and the muffaletta. Right, that was feeling um, not exactly what I expected, but uh, Whatever sauce they put on that uh, po' boy was good. Now we're one hour away from our destination in Texas. Here we are. We finally made it to our destination. And Paul is guiding us to the property, which Google doesn't really know where it is. That could be a good thing. The road, a little rougher than I was expecting. He said he didn't have time to grade it before we arrived. Ooh, this is nice. I mean, aside from the road, I love what they've done with the place. Now I know why they call it the Piney Woods. It is great catching up with friends you haven't seen in a while. We also looked at a potential candidate for Pelicamp Central because, yes, that is part of the reason I wanted to come here, getting some land roughly halfway across the country. So, we're going to the jalapeno tree. There's Paul. Then I ate some Mexican. That's all I filmed. Well, good morning. Such a beautiful morning here in Texas. I think it is even unseasonably warm. It's like in the 60s. We're like in mid-January here. This is the Piney Woods area of Texas. And this is our friends, Paul and Tina's version of Pelicamp. They call it Tiki West. But let me tell you, I love what they've done with this place. I mean, they have a whole barn dominium back there. I didn't know what a barn dominium was until recently. Um, in any case, we stayed here tonight and we're gonna stay, I mean, last night and we're gonna stay here tonight again. But right now, I think this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna go to a, a local state park here to, to get the essence of the Piney Woods area. And you know, do, do a, a little bit of a touring of the area before we head uh, tomorrow towards the Dallas Fort Worth. And we're gonna have a meetup.
Last night, Paul and Tina showed us an area in nearby Kilgord called the world's wealthiest acre. So that's where we're going first. Here we are. This is where the greatest concentration of oil wells in the world once stood, producing 2.5 million barrels of oil. In 1930, one Columbus M. Joyner struck oil right here, and this marked the discovery of the vast East Texas oil field. Well, greetings from Kilgore, Texas. Greetings from the world's richest acre. And here they have the, the plaque on the floor to prove it. And it's one of those places, I don't know like, the exact story of this place, but it's like the most, they had the most oil rigs in this particular acre here in, in, in Kilgore, Texas, which nowadays is just part of downtown. But, um, you know, Paul and Tina brought us here last night when we went to the, to the Mexican restaurant and I'm like, I'd like to see this place during the daytime. And you see, it's like one right next to the other. Look at that. It's, uh, let me see if I can fly the drone to, to show you better. But uh, yeah. And here they have uh, Kilgore Historical Preservation Foundation. Uh, each one of them has like all these uh, plaques, you know, direct donated by Arcadia Refining Company. And uh, one thing that puzzles me, I don't know if they were originally exactly in, the, in, the, in this exact spot where they are nowadays. I think uh, they may have been moved and put all like, you know, lined up, lining this, uh, this uh, street here. It's uh, very quintessentially Texas, right? All the derricks get decorated during Christmas. The reason why Kilgore is also known as the City of Stars. Let me tell you, this is one of those things, one of those places that generally you only discover if someone, like a local, tells you about it. Very cool. And here's an aerial view of the town of Kilgore, Texas. Next, we're going to Tyler State Park. Someone recommended I go there if I wanted to get the true essence of what the Piney Woods are all about. Here we are. It is $8 per person to visit the park. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do the Whispering Pines nature trail. It's supposed to be very nice. The ranger in there told me that it was one of the nicest ones. And then we might go by the lake. We'll see. Here we are, this is it. We are here. It is supposed to be one mile all around. And no, oh, there is a restroom at the, towards the end. There's camping. This is gonna be nice. By the way, today we've got perfect hiking weather. It's what, like 75 degrees, sunny, it's beautiful, beautiful day out here. One thing that uh, kind of surprises me about this area, it is not as flat as I, th I thought it would be. Look at this, it's, it's pretty hilly terrain, uh, you know, here in, in northeastern Texas. I really like uh, this state park so far. Look at that, it's beautiful out here. Almost like the redwoods, look at that. And I don't know if you've noticed, but we've been going downhill most of the time. You know what that means? That the return trip is gonna be mostly uphill. I don't mind, it's 
not that much elevation, I don't think. Oh, by the way, I did remember to bring my hiking shoes. Just I thought I'd point that out. Looks like this is the spur trail. And uh, there's a restroom back there, and I believe there's like a campground in that area too. Like for tent camping. But I forgot to bring the map. I do have my old trails map and it does look like we are more than halfway. I just 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 under halfway there. We've done uh, 0 0.4 miles. And it looks like the downhill portion of this hike is over. I think it's gonna be up and up and up now for the most part. I think we're near the end. That was a nice walk in the woods. Now let's go to the lake. Here we are. Now, it being the dead of winter, there's not a whole lot of people here. Here we go, this is the lake right there. And there's a trail that goes all around the lake. I don't think, it's two miles. I don't think I wanna do that today. But let's go down there and uh, see what it looks like. Tell you during the summertime this must be very nice and actually today it, it almost feels like summer it's like now it's like 80 degrees a floating dock there I'm, I'm sure you can swim in the lake and I see some people fishing and uh, if and when I get that pontoon boat we'll definitely we'll definitely add uh, uh, by um, Tyler State Park here in the in the Piney Woods to our list of of places to return to. By the way, they have a bunch of campgrounds and they all look very nice. We're going to Tyler to meet up with someone at ETX Brewing Company for a mid-afternoon snack and IPA. Here we are downtown. Tyler, by the way, much larger than expected. Then again, we're in Texas, right? Everything is larger. Here we go, brothers from a different mother. Here we are. The porch at ETX. Not very busy today, but then again, it is mid afternoon on a weekday, but it seems very nice. We met up with Derek and Lacey of Cross Country RV Tech and Solar, but I forgot to turn on the camera. And that evening, we had dinner with Paul and Tina. Hey, Paul, say cheese. And that's all we really did in the Piney Woods. We had a great time sharing with old friends and meeting new ones. Tomorrow, we're heading to the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And our time here at Tiki West is coming to an end. Of course, it's been great fun getting to hang out with, with Paul and Tina once again. 
and uh, seeing the barn, the barn dominium that they built from scratch and their property here and of course they let us stay at their place here the, at their campground the private campground it's not a public campground but in any case and part of the reason um part of the reason that that i wanted to come here and see this area besides you know catching up with them um a possible location for pelicamp central you know this is kind of in the middle of the country it would be a halfway point between pelicamp the original and a, and a possible pelicamp west in the future unfortunately we haven't been able to to find that that perfect uh, piece of land out here not yet anyway that might happen in the future but uh, we really like the area and uh, it's now in our radar you know Tyler seems to be like a very nice town and uh, of course we visited Tyler State Park and now we're going into into Dallas I wanted to show you something because he conserves he preserves the banner that he he used for our first rally, you know, uh, that we did in, in back in, in San Antonio, back in 2019. And check it out. That's the banner that he had at the rally. Welcome YouTube celebrity. Who would have thought even back then? Um, it says we had a 70, 79,000 subscribers and uh, that, that, I'm, I'm so happy that he kept that and he also uh, you know keeps um, around the property all kinds of signs you know advertising what used to be the, the, the RV caravan with us which uh, was the company they started to do RV rallies and caravans and whatnot I really like this area hopefully at some point we'll find a piece of land. I mean, there's a piece of land next door that, that even has a barn in it, but um, it's a little over our, our budget here. Um, oh, there she is, that's Tina. She's planting some flowers and whatnot. And in a few minutes here, we're gonna start uh, our departure from, uh, yeah, that's the, <laughs> that's the, the banner for our rally from back in, back in 2019. Yeah, that was the beginning of the 2019 road trip that you've seen here on YouTube and Amazon and everywhere else. All right, the road beckons. those today it's very windy we're doing 7.6 miles per gallon what can you do up until now we have resisted the urge to stop at bucky's we passed the one in macon georgia and birmingham alabama but now we are in texas in terrell texas i believe We haven't stopped at any Bucky's along the way, but now that we are in Bucky's land in Texas, and I don't know if this may have been one of the first Bucky's, uh, more research shall go into this. We decided to stop here, you know. Um, not exactly the least expensive gas we've found in Texas, but it seems to be the price around here. $2.99 a yeah, Bucky's doesn't advertise their gas prices, but they are usually very competitive compared to the other gas stations in the area. It is a tradition. Hi, Bucky! <laughs> Actually, this Bucky's is kind of empty, which is surprising. In other states, they have practically become tourist destinations. A little 
too big perhaps. But I like big bucks and I cannot lie. We can already see the Dallas skyline in the distance. We're going there tomorrow, well, the day after actually. It's time for another RV cooking show and um, I bought these ribs, boneless, we're gonna do like a mix of barbecue and Cuban style pork, we'll see how it comes out. We're going to cover one side in barbecue rub, I'm melting some butter and we're definitely off level here. We're going to brown the pork on all sides and maybe, maybe add a little more rub. Now for the Cuban part, some vino seco dry cooking wine and some Goya Mojo Criollo, which is a Creole style marinade. It makes everything taste good. Finally, a little bit of water and we're going to let it simmer for a while, until some of that water evaporates. Now for the weird part, I'm gonna add some mushrooms. It's gonna be a very eclectic dish. I'm also adding some frozen onions. Well, this came out surprisingly good, actually. I already tasted it. We got some leftover yuca from, what, four days ago? And let's eat. See you tomorrow. Well, good morning and hello everybody. Greetings from the Dallas Fort Worth, uh, no, the Dallas Arlington KOA holiday. And we're in the, in the Dallas the Fort Worth area. Uh, we've never been in this area before. And we're, we're gonna kind of do it backwards. First, we're going to Fort Worth today. And then tomorrow we're going to Dallas. We're even gonna have a meetup in Dallas. So um, really looking forward to that. Beautiful weather today. Look at that sky. One sticker. Here we are, Fort Worth. And the main thing we're gonna do here is the stockyards. But first, let's drive by downtown. Get a feel of the city. On the left here, we have the John F. Kennedy Memorial. And there seems to be some kind of cheerleading event in town. It feels like a very clean, walkable downtown. First impression is good. That would be the Tarrant County Court. Now let's go to the stockyards. I think we're getting close. Yes, the cobblestone street is a sign we are approaching a historic area, right? As we turn right, right here on East Exchange Avenue, well, this is it. Pretty congested area, but it seems like a lot of fun. There's a plethora of bars and restaurants, and of course, there's only so much you can eat or drink, right? All right, let's find parking. They have a couple of these longhorns you can take a picture with, and the whole place has a nice festive vibe, almost Disney-esque in its execution. 
They even have a mechanical bull. It is, of course, still early, perhaps too early for this place. I'm sure in a couple of hours it is going to be happening. Here we have some shops and restaurants. It's a Cadillac. Ooh, there's a record store that sells beer. I guess vinyl is making a comeback. There are plenty of stores selling boots, cowboy hats. Hmm. Hmm. What do you think? Bad angle? I guess you can actually buy one of these things. Well, hello there. Of course, there's a rodeo and museums, but I don't know how much of that we are actually going to do. And now there's a line to take a picture with the big horn. I don't know who that is, but we'll soon find out. I see a brewery, Second Rodeo Brewing Company. It soon becomes evident that this is a party town where you're allowed to walk around with a drink in your hand. Very lively, very festive. And this is pretty much the end. It is just a couple of blocks long. This is that main highway we took from downtown. Very, very busy. This cattleman's steakhouse seems really good. It was established in 1947 and I kind of wish we hadn't had that big breakfast. I also wonder if it is related to the one in Oklahoma City. Of course, there is no shortage of steakhouses in this area. Here we go, it's official. I kind of wanted to do the John Wayne Museum and the Cowboy Hall of Fame, but ultimately we decided against it. They have some interesting metal art here on the street. And this is the thing. The whole Cowboy Hall of Fame is undergoing renovations, and while it is open, Today I'm just not feeling it. I'm not in a museum mood. Here we have some more cowboy street art. Ooh, it is a statue of actor and musician Red Steagle. Hmm. And that's where they do the rodeo. While we wait for the 4 p.m. cattle drive, how about an IPA at Second Rodeo Brewing Company? And we have live music. I ordered something that looks like a Philly cheesesteak or nachos. It is actually pretty good. And as my IPA slowly empties out, the place is quickly filling up. I wanted to buy me a cowboy hat. Of course, the one that I really liked was $350. I guess I have good taste. Too good, perhaps, for my wallet.
People are starting to gather here because the cattle run is about to happen. They do it twice a day and we're catching the 4 p.m. run. Oh my goodness, what a beautiful, gorgeous afternoon we have today. Saddle up, it's showtime! Choice for our 133rd anniversary giveaways, Western fashion, ice skating, rodeos, and more. Boys and girls, we got it all covered down here for you. When it's late, is 1882. Here comes the trail bus. Blazing Saddle, 1977. We can't park. Yeah. By the way, this is Chris. Say hi to Chris, everybody. She is the lead trail boss. She's the one that puts all this together. So. And that's all we're gonna do today. The KOA here, it's nice. It is very well located, kind of halfway between Fort Worth and Dallas, but it is a huge metropolitan area, so it is a good 40 to 45 minute drive to Dallas. There it is, good looking skyline. Our first stop is going to be Dilly Plaza, the site of the John F. Kennedy assassination. More specifically, the sixth floor museum, which chronicles the assassination and the legacy of the 35th president of the United States. Here we are, Dilly Plaza, let's park. Admission is $18 per adult and they do not allow video, so let's do a nifty slideshow. It was from this window that the lethal shot that killed Kennedy was fired. Or was it? The first part mostly focuses on Kennedy's political life and presidency, mostly through historic pictures and videos. And here's that final moment the last pictures just before the shots were fired, the very grainy photographs and film frames that recorded the precise moment for posterity. Here's that corner window and the view down to Elm Street. They even have a computer-generated 3D animation, although they could keep the windows a little cleaner, don't you think? While I'm not a big fan of museums with just pictures and text, this part I do find fascinating. There's even a section about the many conspiracy theories regarding the assassination, this one being my favorite. And the rifle, just like this one, was apparently the murder weapon.
Well, as you saw, we started our, our day here in Dallas today at the sixth floor museum up there from where allegedly, you know, the shots were fired that, uh, that you know, eventually killed the President uh, Kennedy. And uh, they did not uh, uh, allow me to take video up there, but uh, I took some pictures. And now we're gonna see the, the very spot where it happened, which is, I suppose, this X right here on the street. And uh, that's where uh, President Kennedy was assassinated, right there. Well, another theory is that the fourth shot may have been fired from here because there's some evidence that the fourth shot may have been from the front. You know, they were coming, the limousine was coming this way. And, uh, you know, there are many conspiracy theories about uh, the Kennedy assassination, as you all know. This is the view from Grassy Knoll, from where, according to one theory, the final shot may have been fired. It is such a unique experience when you get to visit a place where a significant historical event happened especially a relatively recent one, one we have pictures and even movies of. As I was saying, the corner window up there on the sixth floor, that's where I supposedly the, either the, the first shot that wounded him or the, the final shot that killed him. We don't know exactly where they came from. Uh, let's see, there's supposed to be a memorial around here. And there's a, a bunch of people on the street, not, not too many this morning. Kind of trying to explain to you what really happened, which you may never know. Apparently, Delhi Plaza here also happens to be the birthplace of Dallas. Within this small park was built the first home, which also served as the first courthouse. There you go, the more you know. On November 22nd, 1963. And here's a graphical representation. This is the, the Sixth Floor Museum and this is the approximate location. This is what is known as the Old Red Courthouse. Here's a statue of George Dilley, a Dallas businessman, publisher of the Dallas Morning News. And yes, the plaza is named after him. Let's check out the JFK Memorial Plaza. It is a very stark monument. This would be the John F. Kennedy Memorial Plaza. Not my favorite architectural style, but it's supposed to be a place to 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 isolate yourself from from the noise of the city, if you will. All right, let's check out Founders Plaza here. This area was first settled in the 1840s by immigrants from different states as far east as Tennessee. This cabin built out of cedar logs before 1850 and eventually moved to its current location. Yeah, built sometime between 1841 and 1850 and it was moved here in the 1920s. All right, we're hungry and one of the things Texas is famous for is barbecue. Someone recommended Lockhart Smokehouse in the Bishop Arts District, and since we paid parking for the whole day at the museum, we're going to take an Uber. Maybe later we can go up to Reunion Tower. Here we are. good IPA, some of the best baked beans I've ever had, and the brisket. Oh, the brisket. Oh, that was good. 
definitely pleasantly surprised. I kind of wish that they would give you like a plate or you know more formal, uh, but it's I mean it's a it's a barbecue place. Uh, the baked beans, as you know, as you probably know, I'm a baked beans fan, and they're probably some of the best I've ever had. And that brisket, mmm. All right, we're waiting for an Uber. We're going someplace else now. Cool-looking neighborhood, probably worth a revisit someday, sometime. And just like that, we are now at Pioneer Park. Let's check it out. you know they're hollow <laughs> but they're nice they're actually very well made this one is impressive I like that big horn this was a dude at the end of the cattle run you would get all the smell and all the dust and uh, I mean that's what they told us yesterday at the at the at the stockyards that this guy will be like the rookie Anyway, that's a very well, very well made sculpture. I have no idea where we're going next, but we're gonna continue exploring this great city, which at first sight here, first vibe, I like it. From here, we're just gonna walk. There are several points of interest that are walking distance. Yep, it is a good looking city. Hmm, what's going on here? Who find themselves struggling. Thank you, Bishop Burns, for that prayer. We are thankful for all you do for life. You see, you never know what you're gonna find roaming the city streets. this place. Apparently it used to be a nightclub called Gatsby. Well, we're just walking around the streets of, of Dallas here, kind of getting lost. It's one of those cities that kind of encourages getting lost and and discovering things. Say cheese. This is the AT&T Discovery District. And here we have, of course, the Lone Star of Texas. What a beautiful day. The golden statue is called the Spirit of Communication. I guess it makes sense that it is located at the AT&T Plaza here, where, according to the website, tech, culture and entertainment combine to create unique experiences. Right next to the AT&T store too, which, by the way, I didn't film inside, but it's very cool. I checked out the latest phones and devices. That is a gorgeous building right there. And here's the Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas. At some point during the day you need your caffeine fix, so 
It's espresso time. El amor nunca muere. No, Mahatma Gandhi. Who would have thought? And this is actually what we came to see. This giant eyeball, which is actually on private property, so you can't really get to it. This is actually as close as we can get. Luckily, I have a good zoom lens. We continue walking the streets of downtown Dallas, admiring the architecture and the pleasant weather, and we're kind of back where we started. Now guess where we're going next. We are very close, so we're just going to walk. And it could be my perception, but Dallas feels like a very safe city to walk around anywhere. At least downtown, during the daytime. We enter through the Hyatt Hotel. Of course, we get a super clear bird's eye view of Dilly Plaza and the whole JFK assassination site. tower and we definitely get commanding views of uh, downtown Dallas I really like Dallas so far let me tell you Ooh, it's windy up here so let's go back and uh, and that's it we're, we're having the meetup now in a few so we might drive around a little bit get another, a little more of a lay of the land but I think this is it We still have about two hours until our meetup, so let's drive around and see some of the other areas we may want to visit. This is called Clyde Warren Park, and it is very lively. I don't think we're gonna have time to find parking and explore by foot, but uh, let me tell you, <laughs> I like it. Let's drive around it. Hey, Cuban food! Quinceañera, perhaps? Next, we're gonna check out another area called Deep Ellum. Self-proclaimed, the live music capital of North Texas. It is an entertainment district with street murals, quirky art galleries and concert venues, brew pubs, cocktail bars, Tex-Mex restaurants. Hmm. Maybe tomorrow, huh? We must be getting close. I see street art. Yep, this gotta be it.
Okay, that was definitely happening. Now let's go to the brewery where we're holding our 2023 Dallas-Fort Worth meetup, a Texas Ale project. I have a distinct feeling with being here before and uh, yes, we were walking by here earlier. This is where they have that giant eyeball and uh, where I got my espresso. Let me tell you how this happened. It turns out someone called the brewery and then the brewery reached out to me and I told them, hey, I might want to do a meetup in Dallas. And they even reserved this area for us. That was very nice of them. And the meetup was a resounding success. We love you, Robert. Oh, yes, we do. We love you, Robert. And we'll be true. You're not with us. We're blue. Oh, Robert, we love you. Oh, thank you, thank you. Well, as is usually the case, we almost shut down the place. See you tomorrow. Good. Actually, good afternoon. It is Sunday. Take the next right, then turn left. And today's kind of like a cushion day. We don't have any big grand plans for today. Just, you know, we're gonna have some, try to go eat some Tex Mex. We haven't had any Tex Mex since we're here, and it's the thing to eat in Dallas, right? And then we don't know exactly what we're gonna do. So it's a surprise as much for you as it is for us. So. A bunch of people at the meetup recommended Joe T. Garcias in Fort Worth for Tex-Mex, but when we arrived, the line went around the block and it wasn't really moving, so it would have been hours and you know how I feel about making long lines. So we decided to come to this new complex in Arlington called Texas Live. Well, after looking for Tex-Mex without success, I'll let you know about it. Uh, we decided to come to Texas Live. It's supposed to be a thing here and highly recommended. Okay, I see it's kind of like a sports viewing venue with bars and restaurants. But all the restaurants are empty, nobody is eating, so we ended up at Mariano's. Well, this one is called, called Mariano's. Maybe fifth time it is it's just it's the charm. I'm so hungry, I can't even talk. It turns out Mariano invented the frozen margarita. Who would have thought, right? Excellent tortilla soup. I got the enchilada and Illy got the burrito. The service and the ambience are great. Definitely a well-run restaurant. Well, here we go. As uh, some people say, it was scrumptious. By the way, I didn't know this guy, Mariano. He invented the frozen margarita and this place, actually third time was definitely the charm, the charm. This was great. <clears throat> By the way, finding this place was like a whole process. First, we wanted to go to this famous place in Fort Worth called uh, Joe T. Garcia. 
the line went around the block. Then we went to the, the Texas Live, and it was like totally anticlimactic. It was like there was a football game and people were just drinking and there was really all the restaurants were kind of closed. And then Illy found this place and I'm like, you know, and uh, it was better than expected for sure. <sighs> now let's get back to the campground. Well, good morning. We're living, we're living the Dallas Fort Worth area, Arlington here. Yeah. I liked it. Now we're gonna have pretty much an all day drive uh, all the way to West Texas. And, um, and we're gonna take the back roads. Let's just see what it looks like on the back roads of Texas. Let's take some of the back roads, like this one by Lake Worth. Amazing things are waiting to be discovered once you get off the interstate. One good thing about Texas highways is they have a lot of these picnic areas. I don't see any signs, so I assume you could potentially overnight at one of these. Let's go a bit brunch at the picnic area. I'm uh, sauteing some mushrooms, some broccoli and some uh, cauliflower. And then we're gonna scramble some eggs and... That's what I'm gonna call it. Brunch at the picnic area. Well, here we go, did some frozen onions and... Um, and you know, added some spices to the egg and uh, I think it's gonna be good. Mm, bon appetit! Well, there are some interesting things. It is just a long way across Texas. The landscape dotted by oil derricks, abandoned structures, windmills. We drive across small towns like Olney, Texas here. Grass-fed cattle, lots of them. And contrary to popular belief, not all of it is flat. Actually, a lot of it is flat. By the way, we have pretty strong headwinds, so this is probably the worst fuel economy I've ever had. Oh yeah, according to the app, get between 15 and 20 mile per hour winds, but headwinds made straight from the west. No wonder, no wonder we're getting such crappy mileage, but it is what it is. We're approaching Monday, I believe after that we'll be in Knox City and then, well, eventually we'll, we're gonna stay somewhere in, in western Texas. Alright, bathroom break. Did you notice the change in topography, like sudden after Nuck City? Starting to look like the desert. Yeah, rolling hills, juniper all over the place. Drive into the west, into the sunset. Drive into the west. Drive into the west, into the sunset. Drive into the west. Drive into the west, into the sunset. I'm glad we found this gas station because we're running on fumes here. It is entirely automated. Mm. 
Ooh, it's windy out there. This has got to be by probably by far one of the most remote gas stations. I mean, it's not only out of I don't think they have anybody here. And um, it's, yeah. I mean, we were running really low. Uh, we, you know, I, I forgot to put gas in Knox City, and uh, and we're doing six miles per gallon with this 20 mile an hour headwind. So it is what it is. We'll put. We'll make sure to to, to refuel often. All right. Let's take one final break here. Oh no, that's not a good sign. Am I the only one who finds this barren landscape really alluring? Let's stop here real quick because, well, it is here. It is a replica of Jesus Christ's tomb. It is one of those remote roadside attractions and since we're here, I heard that back in 2016 it was set on fire, but I'm glad they have restored it. Even though I am not an overly religious person, I have a special appreciation for places like this. Well, yeah, this is one of those things that I either heard about it or, or, or saw it uh, on another YouTube video. But yeah, it's a, it's a apparently Bible accurate replica of Jesus Christ's tomb. Right here in the middle of nowhere, Texas. Anyway, let's, let's find the campsite for tonight and uh, tomorrow we continue driving to the west. Here we are at Coleman Park here in Brownfield, Texas, Western Texas, and uh, it appears to be free. We have a, a power, 30 amp, and uh, there's a dump station, potable water, and uh, let's see, they have cer certain rules, and uh, Coleman RV Park here, five day limit, per pets allowed on leash, donations accepted, appreciated, I mean, so, um, yeah, I might consider uh, giving them a donation because, I mean, it's not bad. Yeah. Well, we're going to spend the night here and, uh, and tomorrow we continue driving to the west uh, into New Mexico. We've got some Florida snapper here, so let's cook ourselves some dinner. Some New Orleans Cajun seasoning and we're going to melt some butter and steam some broccoli and cauliflower. I'm going to slice half an onion. On the other side, I'm just going to do some salt and black pepper. I'm going to mince some garlic as well. Oh, look at that! That is some delicious blackened snapper!
That looks delicious. Let's eat. On the road again. And let me tell you, for a quick overnight, this was totally adequate. The infrastructure is a little dated, a little, you know, in disrepair, but I mean, it is what it is. I see the familiar sign coming up. Welcome to New Mexico. Oh, thank you. The land of enchantment. I'm driving through New Mexico, Arizona, even California. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get my kids on 66. The mountains and the desert are my fix. I'm driving to the west in my RV is where I wanna be. And here we are, once again, we've made it to Carlsbad Caverns National Park in New Mexico. So, let's go in. Hello, little bird. I was here once before, and to me, this is the most beautiful cavern, both in quality and quantity of rock formations, and the variety, almost like putting all the other caverns together in one place. You can either hike down or take the elevator 750 feet deep into the Earth's crust. Filming inside the caverns is a little bit of a challenge, because they keep them pretty dark. On purpose, I suppose. And the camera will never do justice to a place like this. And we have reached the big room. It is a fun exercise to look for familiar shapes in the rock formations. The lens is incapable of capturing the true sheer size of this place. That's the ladder originally used by one of the early explorers.
it is overwhelming. The whole underground hike is about a mile and a quarter, and it has been called the Grand Canyon, with a roof over it. Just when you thought it couldn't get any better, there's more and more in these smaller rooms. I wonder what beauties are yet to be discovered in the dark crevices of the cave. I'm telling you, it's like they gathered all the rock formations from every cave in the world and they put them here on display in one place, like a cave museum if you will. In typical National Park fashion, there's a detailed raised relief map of the cave. One of the main things to do here is the Dawn of the Bats, which happens seasonally every day at dawn and you get to see hundreds of thousands of bats returning to the caverns. We may get to do that someday, but cameras are not allowed. Well, Carlsbad Caverns here never disappoints. I've never done the bat thing, you know, when you see all the bats coming out of the cave. Um, maybe next time uh, we'll stay a couple of nights in the area and explore even more. But they don't let you film the, the bats, so... But in any case, let's uh, continue exploring this area of New Mexico. Let's see where we can go next. The sun's coming out, and it looks like it might be a beautiful day, but don't be fooled by that. There's a slight chance of rain, even snow. We'll see. In goes the slide. Hmm, interesting clouds. We're going to continue driving west and the only concern is some rain, although the weather pattern seems to be a little unpredictable this afternoon. And we have to cross the Sacramento Mountains at Cloudcroft. I've heard that at high elevation rain can turn into snow, but I don't see anything on the weather app or the Doppler radar, so we're gonna take it one mile at a time. I wish there was an app that combined navigation with weather. The idea is to spend the night at Alamo Gordo, so tomorrow we can visit White Sands National Park, which we've also been there before, but there's a trail that I want to do. We've been going north on US 285, and here in Artesia we're going to take US 82 west. Here's one of several bronze statues, this one called Trail Boss. The statue coming up is called Vaquero, which is Spanish for cowboy. It is a pretty good-looking downtown, with the requisite Art Deco theater, of course. We are now in the land of the Yucca Cactus, the Chihuahuan Desert. I do not like the look of those clouds up ahead. It looks ominous. I see mountains in the distance. And the rain has begun. Oh no, it's getting worse. 
Rain is turning into sleet. And what is that white stuff on the ground? I guess today we're going to put Starship with its off-road tires and four-wheel drive to the test, as the front camera gets covered in ice. We're climbing up to a village called Cloudcraft. Population 674, elevation 8,676 feet or 2,644 meters. No wonder we got snow. I had no idea we were gonna get this high. It is a winter wonderland. We even have snow plows standing by. It looks like a place where we could spend some time with better weather and more time. They have some restaurants, a brewery, and maybe one day I can even learn how to ski or snowboard, or maybe not. That's it for Cloudcraft. Now for the long descent. There are many signs warning about the upcoming 6% grades and I've never driven in snow, so I'll be extra careful and go super slow. On the way down, we get heavier precipitation and I know this is nothing, but it is my first time, so I'm freaking out a little bit here. Eventually, as we descend, snow turns back into rain, black ice now being my biggest concern. Beautiful scenery here on the west side. I want to return someday with better weather. But right now, we're on a mission. We're going to overnight at the Walmart in Alamogordo Tomorrow, we're gonna spend a few hours at White Sands, and then it is quartzite or bust. This is where we're gonna call it. It's gotta be one of the Walmarts with the best views. It's a brand new day, let's fill up at the Walmart Murphy gas station and continue. Let me tell you something, I like this uh, Walmart uh, gas stations, Murphy, Murphy Express, the market there. They're relatively, generally they're very inexpensive, I'm like, I mean Buck is inexpensive, and uh, they ask you all the questions beforehand, like, would you like a receipt? Would you like this and that? Boom. So when you finish fueling, that's it. You put the, the thing back, you know, the, the, the pump and the nozzle back in the pump and you go. And then you press them on camera. Uh, we're going to White, White Sands National Park. That's the next stop. We 
can already see the sand dunes in the distance. This is a national park, so the America the Beautiful annual pass will get us in for free. The last time I was here in 2018, it was still a national monument and the visitor center was still under renovations. Fun historical fact, on July 16th, 1945, the White Sands Missile Range, just north of here, was the site of the first ever nuclear weapon detonation, nicknamed the Gadget. The trail I wanna do today will take us to Alkali Flat, the boundary of that missile range. We skipped breakfast, so it is time for another RV cooking show. Okay, we're gonna let it boil for about an hour or so, and then we'll do the sofrito. We're making some shredded chicken, and since we're going to be here for a few hours, I'm going to set up Starlink, or Pelistar, as I like to call it, and in about an hour we'll shred the chicken, eat it, and then we'll do the hike. Yeah, I forgot to turn off the rooftop GoPros. We're going to start by chopping an onion, a large white onion, also green pepper. This time we're going to use avocado oil and start by sauteing those onions. Salt, black pepper. I'm going to start smashing some garlic, move it around a little bit and get rid of whatever that is, and add the green peppers to the mix, and continue peeling my garlic. Hmm, this is going to be so good. Next, we'll mince the garlic. I'm going to get my chicken so I can start shredding it. Start sauteing the garlic. I'm gonna start uh, shredding the chicken. Actually, Ili is going to help me finish with that while I add some more salt and pepper. And now is when it's gonna get really good. We're going to add some garlic stuffed olives. It would normally be pimento stuffed manzanilla olives, but this is what we have. And vino seco cooking wine. A little bit of marinara sauce, no sugar added. Smoked paprika, lots of smoked paprika. Oregano, a dash of cumin, and just for fun, I'm gonna add a little bit of cayenne pepper, just to give it a little kick, and basil, and at this point, I'm just making it up as I go along. Now we'll add the chicken and mix it all up real good, salt to taste, and this is ready. Normally, you would eat it with white rice, but we're watching our carbs. Let's dig in. And today, for real, it is lunch with a view. Well, isn't this an amazing place? And uh, ever, since I was, ever since I was here back in 2018, I wanted to do this trail that we're gonna do now. I think it's called the Aquila Flats. So um, let's get on it. Look at that, it looks... Yesterday we saw real snow, but today this almost looks like snow. And uh, might as well be, it is, it is cold. And with this wind, uh, the wind chill is probably in the 30s. You know, trail markers are in red and I'm just gonna do three hours. We, we may not do the whole three hours. We might at the one hour mark just turn around. And I've got my old trails app, so uh, that way I won't get lost. There we go. And in case of a real emergency, I have my my Garmin, you know, just in case. Alcali Flat. Did I say Aquila Flat earlier? That, that is something else, actually, that we're going to see later today. <laughs> this is Alcali, Alcali Flat, which is, I believe, the material out of which it's, all, all these sand dunes are made. 
This is actually 98% gypsum sand, and it is supposed to be pretty rare, it being water soluble. And I don't know if you can tell, but this sand is super fine. It, it almost feels like, <clears throat> it has like, it shines. It's, uh, it's this material. It almost looks that, like the sand in, in Destin, Florida, actually. It's that fine, fine, fine sand. And um, look at that, with the, with the dark skies behind us, it's, uh, it's quite a sight. Yep, we're surrounded by sand dunes. Completely surrounded. Whew. This is a surreal experience. But you look at this. It doesn't feel like this kind of landscape can exist in the United States. I imagine being in the Sahara, perhaps. And I'm glad the trail is well marked, because it would be very easy to lose one's bearings at a place like this. that be like an oasis? That was a tough one. tell you look at that I almost almost feel like Lawrence of Arabia here in the middle of this desert so look at that it's like and don't worry I brought plenty of water and I've got this thing I'm not gonna get lost out here I'm just trying to reassure myself here I hope you can hear me with all this wind and I believe that we have reached the famed Alkali Flat. I think this is it. Yep, that installation looks conspicuously military, but let's walk all the way to the end. supposed to go any farther that way huh I bet you that's some secret military uh, uh, installation back there actually I believe I believe it was somewhere on here where they detonated the, the first atomic bomb ever right all right we're gonna jog our way back no <laughs> that's not gonna work is it oh gosh I'm full of sand. One thing to note is, the trailhead sign really overestimates how long it takes to do this hike at 3 hours. 
and the old Rails app greatly underestimates it at one and a half hours. I think it is going to be just under two after all is said and done. I just can't get tired of that surreal landscape. Well, here goes another one. Down we go. Woo! <laughs> You gotta do what you gotta do. I guess this is gonna be more the norm. Oh gosh. This is a steep one. I'm sinking. Whoa, I'm definitely sinking. Here we go again. Let's try to take it slow this time, maybe. There's no taking it slow. Here we have some people in the distance for scale. What can I say? This has been an awesome trail. I mean, we're almost there. A little longer than I expected. A little, definitely a little longer than, than the old trails uh, estimate, but shorter than the trailhead sign. The trailhead sign said three hours. I was like, mm, maybe I'll do it. Uh, it's been a little under two hours and I can see the trailhead already. So, but, but look at this. I mean, this is like, Extraordinary. I'm gonna say this is definitely top 10, if not top 5. Whoa, one other, another one, please. Of all the trails I've ever done. I mean, definitely. It's uh, it's not extremely long or extremely strenuous. It's about, about two hours. And uh, you get to see landscape like this and you get to really feel, I mean, it's, it's heavily trafficked. I see people all over, but you definitely feel like you are kind of out here in the middle of, of this desert. You know, as I said, I feel like, like Lawrence, Lawrence of Arabia all of a sudden. I'm really glad I decided to do the, the whole thing. This is it, we've made it back. Well, that was awesome, as, as you witnessed, uh, almost. Almost bucket list, but uh, this was not bucket list, but it was uh, definitely a very nice hike. Now, driving to the west, into the sunset, almost to Arizona. Enjoy the ride. I see a northbound border patrol checkpoint, which only means we're probably going to see another one once we pass Las Cruces. Every highway will have one of those once you get within a certain number of miles from the border.
We're taking US 70 across the St. Augustine Pass and down to Las Cruces, where we're going to join Interstate 10 towards Arizona. Here's that other border patrol checkpoint, but there's no one here. Let's refuel here in Aquila Flats, which in hindsight, we should have done it in Las Cruces. It was way cheaper there. I wonder what's going on here. It looks like half of the Las Cruces police department is here. Crossing the Continental Divide at what is probably the most anticlimactic spot. Well, we're gonna get there at night, which is not my favorite way to do it, but we'll figure it out. It's gonna freeze tonight, so we also have to take certain precautions, like, like filling up the fresh and not using, like, we don't have a heated hose. We're going to be staying at the Lordsburg KOA. No frills, easy in and out, and tomorrow we're going into Arizona. And the plan is to spend one last night with full hookups before our RV boondocking extravaganza at the Q23 meetup in Quartzsite. This was a Lordsburg KOA. I've been here, this is my third time actually. And uh, I mean, it is a no frills campground. Basically, it's, uh, it's for me, it's kind of like the utilitarian stop right before we get to, to Arizona. Now today we have a four hour drive to, I'm not sure if it is pronounced Gila Bend or Gila Bend, but I have a feeling it's Gila Bend because as you know, many places, especially in Arizona, New Mexico, California, they retain their Spanish pronunciation. Uh, so um, let me know if you know how, how it is uh, pronounced. Oh, we have another, another Micro Mini. That one is not a flex though. Um, in any case, tomorrow we're going to Quartzsite. As you can see, beautiful weather today, it's perfect. And I think we're gonna break the curse of Quartzsite of the past two times I've been there. Wait, eh, eh. And I think I took the wrong turn, uh, just because I'm talking too much. Uh, we're breaking that curse of Quartzsite being a uh, rainy. There's no rain in the forecast for at least the next 10 days. Uh, but they've been wrong before. Anyway, let's hit the road. Yeah, the area coming in and out of the KOA, not very pretty. Sunset, drive into the west Drive into the west 
and driving through New Mexico, Arizona, even California. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get my kids on 66. The mountains and the desert are my fix. Driving to the west in my RV is where I wanna be. By the way, great route to take if you like trains. And here's a rare appearance of an Amtrak passenger train. They are not all that common. And I still don't know what the thing is. Our final destination, Quartzsite, Arizona. But first we have to get there. And we're all about the journey as much as the destination, so enjoy the ride. Driving to the west. Well, this is called Texas Canyon even though it is in Arizona. And this westbound rest area right here, probably one of the most picturesque in all of Interstate 10. Texas Canyon, huh? Some uh, contemporary petroglyphs. We're now approaching Benson, Arizona, and while we're not gonna stop anywhere except a supermarket to resupply, it should be a very scenic drive all the way to our overnight location. We're now approaching the Tucson area, and we can already see Mount Lemon covering snow behind this Shoya cactus field. There is so much to see and do in the Tucson area, actually, probably my favorite big city in Arizona. But today we're just stopping for groceries, and whenever I'm in this area, I like to visit Fry's. They are usually huge and have everything you could possibly need. Besides, it is fun to explore different supermarket chains around the country and see what they might have that others don't. Did you know Mount Lemon Ski Valley is the southernmost ski resort in the continental United States? And I just love these views of the downtown skyline with Mount Lemon in the background. We were here back in 2021, and we'll be here again, I promise. As we continue west, I can't help but notice the silhouette of Picacho Peak and Pinal Air Park, an aircraft storage facility. I'm going to reminisce because during my first cross-country road trip ever back in 2018, I drove through here my first encounter with Arizona. I mean, I had been to the Grand Canyon before, but it's not the same as driving and seeing the gradual changing scenery and ecosystem. At some point, I looked to the left and saw all these little twigs sticking out of the slope and all of a sudden, I realized there were also waro cacti. Thousands of them. It is a moment I will never forget. Years later, in 2021, I actually climbed to the top of Picacho Peak, which was another great experience. We're gonna take Interstate 8, which shoots straight west, bypassing Phoenix. Yeah, crossing the Phoenix metropolitan area is never fun, especially towing. And I-8 is such a beautiful drive, with so many saguaros. This is where we're gonna stay, at the Sonoran Desert RV Park, formerly the Gila Bend KOA. So here we have half an onion and a Japanese knife. So we're gonna chop that onion, as you do. Melt some butter. And tell you what, I'm gonna do another onion because we love onion and half an onion is just not enough. salt and the whole green pepper sliced actually I forgot the rest of the onions and more salt and black pepper a 
and I'm going to smash and peel some garlic. But first, let me move this around. Of course, mince that garlic. A little more salt, and you must be asking yourselves, what are we cooking today? Well, paprika, oregano, cumin, turmeric, and a little marinara sauce, and hot sauce. Mmm, so aromatic. And some cooking wine. And we've been thawing some jumbo shrimp. This dish is called camarones enchilados, which is basically shrimp in a Creole sauce. The recipe originated in Haiti, brought to Cuba by Haitian immigrants during the Haitian Revolution in the late 18th century. the color on that sauce hmm. oh yeah well good morning hold on let me put it on tow mode just because on tow mode it doesn't uh, the, the, the the automatic engine stop doesn't uh, activate um in any case here sonoran desert rv resort or rv park one of the two I don't know what the difference is. Um, very nice. This is actually my third time here. This is usually my go-to place before or after yeah, Quartzite. Right. Uh, it's about two hours away and it's immaculately clean, nice laundry. And uh, yeah, this used to be the Hilla Bend KOA the first time I came here. Many people don't like these brown-colored desert mountains, but to me, there is something specially alluring about them. Inexplicable. That would be Palo Duro, the largest nuclear power plant in the United States, and the only one in the world not located near a large body of water. It uses treated sewage for cooling. The more you know. I just love this stretch of Interstate 10 going through the Sonoran Desert, looking at the horizon in anticipation, hoping the next hill may reveal our final destination. There it is! Let me zoom in. We can even see the big tent. During the last week of January, Quartzite hosts the sports vacation and RV show. And the big part of that is the big tent. And that is happening this week as we film this. We're also taking part in the Q23 YouTubers meetup. The main thing about Quartzite and why so many people decide to spend their winters here boondocking in their RVs is, besides the relatively mild climate, the 2500 inhabitant town is surrounded by public Bureau of Land Management land. And this land is also relatively flat, so it is perfect for camping. To the north side of town you have High Jolly and Plomosa Road, the Scatton Wash to the east and Dome Rock to the west. And all these are completely free for up to 14 days, with no services. To the south there is La Posa Long Term Visitors Area or LTVA, divided into La Posa North, La Posa West, La Posa South and Tyson Wash. Here we are arriving at La Posa South LTVA, which offers pet toilets, dump stations, potable water, and trash collection for a fee. The LTVA charges $40 for 14 days or $180 for the whole 7 month season, and you can stay at several different locations. As you can imagine, a lot of people from colder climates find this very appealing as a way to spend their winters for very little money. Here, in the desert, there are no addresses, so everything works by GPS coordinates, and finding your way along all these makeshift roads made by the ones who were here before us. And we have arrived at the location of the Q23 meetup. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'm a little confused about where exactly they want me to drop the trailer. As the sun begins to set, the mountains take on this crimson hue. Very unique. It is going to be a cold night, so we're going to gather around the campfire, make new friends, and share stories from the road, as you do. Good morning, Quartzite. Mm, it's gonna be another beautiful day here at our campsite. Perfect weather. Let's go check out the big tent. There's the line for the dump station, which will get longer and longer as the week progresses. It is opening day for the big tent, so there is a lot of traffic as we approach Quartzite. And here we have the entrances to La Posa West and La Posa North. Some parts of La Posa West, by the way, walking distance to the big tent, so that's your pro tip of the day. Here on the left is the official entrance to the RV show, but we're gonna go a little further north. This is it. This area is called Tyson Wells. It is a huge swap meet, surrounding the big tent, mostly on the north side. Oh, it is our lucky day! I was very lucky to be able to find parking here at this parking lot. As you can see, this place is packed. I mean, I've never seen this place so full of people. And um, well, let's, let's go to the big tent and maybe we'll get something to eat, something to drink. We'll see. There's a rock, gem and mineral show going on as well, all January and February. Sometimes you find amazing geodes and other things. As you can see, this swap meet is massive. I think if you can't find it here, it does not exist. Of course, there are all kinds of RV accessories, even water pumps, and yeah, they really have everything you might need here. I might add, not everything is RV related. Let's just say there's a very eclectic collection of items for sale here. Hmm, maybe I should get a Starlink pole and bracket. And there's a lot of solar here too, because we are in the desert, and generally sunlight is abundant in these parts. Let's continue walking towards the big tent, and here they have the homemade ice cream maker. I've heard the machine is just for show, but it's still really good ice cream. And of course, the famous Beer Bellies Adult Daycare. It is a tradition to come here. And who am I to argue with that? Well, cheers! It's a tradition. Why 
But you know, this place has really filled up. Well, here we are at the big tent. Oh, my voice is gone. I thought it was Bob Wells, but no, it was us. Oh, live music! And it is none other than the Border Hookups. I've been meaning to meet them. You can Maybe we'll get a chance to say hello later. But now let's go into the big tent. Let's go inside the big tent. When I was here in 2021, the show looked kind of sad. It had been raining the whole week and COVID was still a thing. But in 2023, Quartzite is back, baby. Stronger than ever. In some ways, this is very similar to the supplier's building at the Tampa RV show, but here I think there's more like odd and strange things, and definitely more solar stuff. Yeah, you can either use it for a flagpole or Starlink. We need to get one of those. I like it. We are very cool to be at the big tent once again, and uh, we just met uh, Brian, Adventure Van Man. Feel? Like this, you know, like this, left handed, right handed. It's a truck camper with a bimini top. Where have you seen that? Exo holler. Well, what do you know? I had never seen a truck camper toy hauler with a bimini top. I mean, you get to see all kinds of interesting things here at, at the quartz site. Uh, that's a long name. Let's call it the Quartzite Army Show. You never know who you're going to run into at the Quartzite RV. It has a long name, but like Quartzite Vacation and uh, Recreation, whatever it's called. The Quartzite Army Show, here we are with Mikey Barbie, of course. I mooched up with him a couple of years ago. No, a couple of months ago. What's wrong with me? Chris from Electric Bikes. Here we have Ross from RV or TV. Hey. And let's turn it up, world! Yeah. You know, uh, up until yesterday, it felt like everybody was at Tampa, but I think the cool kids are here. <laughs> Ooh, tiny homes. Let's check them out. Actually, this would work out great for our telecamp in Florida. We got a, a wood, wood stove and... Uh, you can't get in the bed. There's just no closets, I think. But it's very cute. We got a refrigerator and... Uh, well, that's a composting toilet. Mm, that might be the deal breaker right there. We continue walking around the vast swap meet. One of these days. One of these days I might get me one of this. Oh, here we are, gringos. And they are from Billings, Montana and Quartzsite, Arizona. Let's check it out. I want hot. It is called a Montana burrito. Mm, bon appetit. In hindsight, I think we should have gotten the carnitas, but what's done, it's done. All right, they had me at espresso. Well, you know me, I gotta have my espresso shot. Now let's uh, let's continue exploring the RV show. Yeah, 
Uh, we're back in Beer Bellies. A viewer bought me a beer, so I had to do it, right? <laughs> Look what we have here. Hello? No, it doesn't work. It's called the Media Tent. Yeah, this is where they're doing all the seminars this year. I think I know that guy. Oh! <laughs> hey, oh, Tony, how are you, brother? So look who I ran into here at the, at the Quartzsite RV show. It's our friend, Tony from Stressless Camping. Yeah, absolutely. It's just, it's so great to see you again. It's our, our Quartzsite meetup. The, the one thing missing is we don't have beers in our Yeah. What's wrong with us? I know. Well, well last, I as you know, the, the first time we met, it was at... At Bearville. Beer Beer yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I you have that. And my last GoPro battery died, so let's return to camp, and tomorrow we'll continue exploring. Lots of traffic here on opening day. Mark Guido of Grand Adventure has arrived. He's got the large Durango fifth wheel. It is really filling up, like a city of RVs out here. Just magical. The colors as the sun starts going down. It is another beautiful morning here at the Q23. I find it to be so beautiful out here and the freedom to be off-grid. Before going into town, let's drive around the more densely populated areas of La Posa South. This is one of the shortcuts to get from La Posa onto US 95. But first, let's check out Tyson Wash. It is a lot less crowded on this side. We are back in Quartzsite for lunch and we are in the mood for pizza. 
And the best place for that, without a doubt, is Silly Owls. We are famous Silly Owls. It's still early, but this place is gonna get packed here in a few. Our pie has arrived. Well, this is the famous Silly Owls and this place has really filled up. We continue exploring La Posa South, and I want you to pay close attention to the sign coming up on the right. This area is called the Magic Circle. And yes, on a balmy afternoon, you may encounter people sunbathing on natural. Now you know. And that's all I'm gonna say about that. We wanted to go back to the big tent, but someone decided it would be a good idea to do a potluck at 3 p.m., so we barely have enough time to cook something. And this is the moment where our troubles began. Illy was helping me out in the kitchen and she accidentally cut her thumb. And I'm pretty sure she needed stitches, but Sunday afternoon in Quartzsite is not a good place for a medical emergency. So we managed to stop the bleeding, put some band-aids on and join the party. Our fire ring. His name is Sue. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's, oh, you're good? Yeah. It's a Christmas tree. <laughs> Just like that, they turned into night. And it happens to be New Moon. Windy day in Quartzsite. Good morning. Well, it's almost noon actually. And um, we got some clouds, which is probably going to make for a better sunset. And, uh, and uh, it's dusty, but that won't deter us from exploring the queue a little more. Let's do it. Yeah, it looks like someone lost their awning the wind yeah 
that's never a good day. And the line for the dump station keeps growing. Lots of blowing dust today and it is cold. I should have done this yesterday. I guess the only way is through Tyson Wells. Oh well. I think these are the remains of an old abandoned mine. All right, let's see if we can go all the way to to the top of Q Mountain here. It's a little steeper than I was expecting. And I to follow the trail and it is cold there it is the big queue I'm gonna lose my hat. But here we go, here we have 360 views of Quartzite and all the numerous areas where, where people are camping out here. Look at that. And there's so much land, you know, free land here. So there, that's the big tent. La Cosa West, I believe, La Cosa North, and back there, it's uh, somewhere uh, back there is La Cosa South where we are, and then that over there in the far distance, that will be the Scatter Wash, I believe. That's I-10 and US-95. You know, I always wanted to come up here. That is La Cosa South where we are. There it is, the big tent, and the sun wants to come out. So many RVs parked in this desert. It is bitterly cold, cold up here, so we're going down. I'm going down quickly. I was about to quote the Christmas vacation movie, but let's just say we managed to fill up our black water tank, so an emergency dump is in order. You take a look at that line. There's like, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven RVs waiting to, to dump. And uh, I think for, for my $40, they should have more dump stations, to be honest about it. I just dump my trash. We're just gonna do a... a try to dump uh, somewhere in town, campground, and um, next time we're staying at the Scat and Wash. That's all I'm saying. Let's go! The dump station here at La Posa South is ridiculously insufficient for the amount of people here. So we're just gonna go into town and pay at an RV park, and I still have to tell you what happened at the Q Mountain, even though if you follow me on social media, you probably already know. At this moment in the trip, I thought it was just a sprained ankle and I was feeling better, so I didn't give it a second thought. I figured I'd take it easy, but at this point, there is still so much to see here in Quartzsite and in California, Nevada, perhaps even Utah, but more about that later. Let's dump right here. They also have a line, but it is not nearly as long. Well price gouging in Quartzsite for, for dumping and water is definitely a thing. Um, yeah, I'm still limping a little bit from, from that fall. Um, I don't know, I'm, I'm starting to rethink my assessment of Quartzsite. I think I like Quartzsite for a couple of days, as long as you don't have to actually dump here or, or, or get water, you know? This is the first time that, I'm that I've stayed here for more than five days. and. Uh, I love Quartzsite, 
but just for a couple of days. Yep, that was definitely Cranky Robert speaking. Now let's get propane and I think the RV pit stop might be the best place for that. It is a very efficiently run operation. Even though the more sensible thing would have been to go to a larger town like Lake Havasu City or even Phoenix or Vegas. At this point I still think my leg is going to get better and the same with Illy's finger so we decide to park at Plumosa Road by ourselves and regroup. Come up with a new plan if you will. I've never camped in this area and I think I like it. Well, it was a little of a stressful morning and uh, I'm still limping a little bit here, but look at that, the, the wind has died down. And um, as you saw, we moved to Plomosa Road here. I, I had never actually camped in this part, in this area of Quartzite. And, um, it is very nice, beautiful day here. And I don't know for how long we're gonna stay here at Plomosa, but at least for tonight, for sure. The explorer in me couldn't stay still for too long, so we had to go back into town anyway. I had forgotten to put gas, and we also decided to see some of the points of interest. First, we're going to stop by the cemetery and pay our respects to High Jolly. Born in present-day Greece, he was one of several men hired by the United States Army to introduce camels to transport cargo across the great American desert. In his final years, he moved to Quartzsite, Arizona, where he mined and scouted for the US government. And he died in 1902. Of course, no visit to Quartzsite would be complete without visiting the High Jolly Monument here at the military cemetery. And um, there is, it was a, a camel herder. So, yeah, someone come up, came up with this brilliant idea of using camels during the Civil War to transport stuff. And, uh, well, you can pause and read. Let's stop by the Yacht Club. Yes, it is a Yacht Club in the desert. Isn't that peculiar? While it is mainly a restaurant, they do sell memberships. And thanks to something called reciprocity, that membership card could potentially get you into other Yacht Clubs. Isn't that something? Let's go back to Plomosa Road. There are a couple of things I want to see, and then the escapees are having a happy hour, so we can't miss that. As I said, here are several Easter eggs hiding in plain sight, here in the Sonoran Desert. And in my original plan, we were going to see many of them. But in my current condition, I'm going to settle for just two, here, right off Plomosa Road. And the first one, we have to get off the pavement. Here we are, this is the site of the Quartzite Rock Alignment. Well, yeah, I'm still limping a little bit. And this is what is called the Quartzite Rock Alignment. And if you see it from the air, it reads Quartzite on the ground. And they have this uh, fence here, so, so you can come in by foot, but not by car. And um, yeah, I shouldn't be walking this much, but I want to get to where it is. Well, here we go. This is a queue. It says Quartzite. Let's see if we can fly the drone. It's not too windy today, by the way. I really love this area back here, like away from everybody else. It would be cool to, to camp here in this wilderness.
Now let's go see something called an intaglio or geoglyph, which is basically an engraving on the rock, in this case on the rocky desert surface. This one is a little bit of a hike, which I can't do in my condition, so I'm just going to fly. It is actually rather small, but there it is. It is called the Baus Fisherman. It is anywhere from 500 to 2000 years old. Let's land and get back to the campsite. I want to check out that SKP's happy hour. There they are. Wow, that's a lot of people. Oh yeah, it's a party! Hot dogs, live music, and I even got to meet Brian of the YouTube channel RV with Tito. Oh yeah, it's been one of those do nothing days here at the Plumosa area. But right now we're gonna do some grilling. And there seems to be some big event over there. They have some like a PA system and all that. So. I don't know. Oh, it's gonna be so good. Anyway, cheers. Well, I just flipped him. Look at that. Mm. Well, bon appetit. Just another lazy day in the desert. But tomorrow we're going to an urgent care in Lake Havasu City, mainly so someone can take a look at Illy's finger because she's lost some movement in her thumb, and my leg hasn't improved much so might as well get that looked at too. I've neglected my sticker map for far too long, so let's take care of that and hit the road. To Lake Havasu we go! Riding, riding in my RV, wherever I want. 
Cause I'm free in my RV Yeah, I'm riding Riding, riding Riding in my RV My RV Wherever I want to be Cause I'm free in my RV It is a beautiful drive Driving The pavement's rushing under the tires A different time zone You know I'm gonna get higher Cause I'm on fire Riding Have no idea where we'll end up tonight It doesn't matter Cause you know it's gonna feel right Because we're riding Yeah, riding Riding in my arms Wherever I want to be Cause I'm free in my RV Yeah, I'm riding Riding, riding Riding in my RV My RV Wherever I want to be Cause I'm free in my RV So, we came here by the urgent care in Lake Havasu City, and it turns out Illy's injury doesn't require immediate attention. On the other hand, I have a fractured fibula, so they put me in a splint and recommend that I see an orthopedic specialist. You know. There are not many options here in Lake Havasu, so against medical advice, I took that splint off and decided to drive two and a half hours to Las Vegas. I mean, I've been putting weight on it for five days, so what's one more? It is always good to be in a big city for situations like this. More medical choices, Uber, food delivery, and the large airport with direct flights to Miami. Just in case. In my RV, yeah, I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV, wherever I Cause I'm free in my RV, Well, we've made it to Sin City, Mount Charleston, covered in snow. So we've been here in Las Vegas for about two weeks, and uh, I think that's the longest we stayed at a place uh, camping, or I would hardly call, call it camping. I mean, we've been here. Uh, I went to to the, the it's called the Desert Orthopedic uh, Center, and they saw me. They confirmed that I have a fractured fibula, and. Uh, and you know they put me in a boot, this fashionable boot, and uh, and they told me to come back in a week. So we reserve an extra week here at the KOA, and uh, and we went back, follow up. Everything seems good. I won't. I'm not gonna need surgery, but um, at this point we want to get back home. And uh, by the way, I want to thank everybody who who offered to drive us back. Uh, we're gonna see if Illy can make it. I think she can. Uh, I'm gonna take it slow. I'll be her co-pilot. And um, we're heading home. And uh, unfortunately, the trip has been truncated, interrupted. But, um, but we'll get back on the road soon enough, I hope. Until the next one, thank you so much uh, for watching and see you on the road. I'm riding, riding in my RV, wherever I want to be, because I'm free in my RV, yeah, I'm riding, 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 I'm riding in my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be. 
Cause I'm free in my RV, yeah. I'm riding in my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be, cause I'm free in my RV, riding, riding, from Florida to Tennessee, my RV, wherever I want to be, cause I'm free in my RV, riding. Riding in my RV Wherever I want to be Because I'm free In my RV Yeah, I'm riding Riding, riding I'm riding in my RV My RV Wherever I want to be Because I'm free In my RV Yeah Mexico. Oh, thank you.
Welcome to Louisiana. I'm more than halfway home I'm getting tired, I'm getting sleepy I've been away for too long Thinking of a song I'm getting close I'm a believer That tonight I'll be home Driving to the east Riding in my 